I need to learn about uh, sort of that higher end of stuff. But uh, I swear sometimes, of course, there's a lot of the uh, the bespoke journeyman photographers that uh, they just sort of work and do all the work and then build a package and send it out. But there's also a lot of photographers working in commercial markets or wedding markets, too, that uh, that uh, shoot a bunch of photos and then have a number of editors go through the library and they'll they'll do editing, color editing and stuff, but they'll also do more tedious tasks like keywording or uh, like metadata description editing or something, you know, where they, they go through and, uh, and make a bunch of changes or a bunch of log lines to... Uh, to have uh, liner notes inserted into the metadata of a photograph. Uh, interesting as a process, but yeah, I've seen like, you know, a couple interns hired in a photography studio just to work on, ta- you know, tagging and logging and keywording stuff, um, which uh, I don't want to do. I don't do that in my Lightroom catalog at all. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, you know, like, a, I don't know, to, to the whatever degree I need, but it's like in a collection or something. Um, so I've seen that, but I've also seen really talented visual editors you know where their training is like is just to use photoshop to apply sharpening you go oh man wow that's what you do is just use photoshop at a really high level to add multiple layer effects into a channel so that you can apply a type of sharpening to the pixels that we don't really understand or use i mean i'm sure it's quite good as just the slider in lightroom but apparently for these professional magazine layout photos they go through a couple passes of of pretty high end old school guys that go through and do specific types of sharpening modifications to the way that the the photographs look. Especially, I think if the photographs are being enlarged to a, to a great degree, you know, if you're thinking about a billboard, but you're thinking about you're thinking about the physical size of a 35 millimeter piece of film. Um, is that what it is? 36, 35. What is it? I'm not sure, but if you think about it, just like a, a frame, like a film frame, it's just, you know, a small little block. And then you think about that stretched out to cover an entire billboard or even just something on TV. I think they have to do a lot of uh, image manipulation to, uh, what do they call it? Interpolate? To interpolate enough pixels to create out of nothing enough pixels uh, to make it so that the resolution of an image can actually exist as something that large. And I think there used to be some uh, some pretty specific processes in place for art directors to send those photographs through to get them uh, appropriately edited for print in a magazine. And so all that sort of stuff has kind of gone out the window now, and, and now it's just sort of, uh, you know, juice the photo up in an editor to make it look cool to get it out online or to get it into a book or something. So maybe it'll seem uh, regrettable in the future that that was sort of the case with a lot of the, the images, but also probably not. I think it'll be be fine it'd be cool to get it'd be cool to get a pro editor on board but i figure i figure that's sort of a way of the past you know i think i talked before about different different ways of the past that uh that like film photography had gone where there was stock photo sessions where you could just take pictures of a a corral of horses you know 30 photographers would take a picture of a corral of horses and they'd, they'd all sell that in a calendar and make 